much different spot this year. Last year, all the talk was pick last, pick last. What are you going to do? What's the, the mood this time around? Um, excitement. Uh, it's uh, a very exciting time for Bowling Green basketball. Uh, the guys of understand that predictions doesn't mean anything. They picked us last this year, probably first this year. Doesn't matter where they pick us, it's how we finish. So uh, they know and they understand. We've been uh, talking about this since March, since we lost to Buffalo in the MAC championship. It's something that we've been working on and, and getting better. And I think the guys have improved. And I'm excited to get going on Wednesday. Obviously, your backcourt was a big reason why you made the match championship game last year. But without Romaggio this year, how much different will your team be looking for? Um, the, the biggest thing, I mean, he was a walking double-double. He, he, he drew a lot of fouls. He got us in the bonus right away. Uh, rebounded extremely well. Um, you know, 1,000 points, 1,000 rebounds. Hard to re replace that. So uh, we got to do that more by committee. Uh, everybody got to step up and uh, do their part in, in rebounding. And, um, you know, w without him, uh, it's, it's more guard-oriented uh, offense. Uh, they'll get more opportunities to, to score and more opportunities in transition. Uh, we got to defend much better without him in, in the middle. And, um, we've taken steps forward in that category already, so I'm excited to see what we can do uh, a lot. Particularly with defensive rebounding, you just gobbled up so many defensive boards, just ends of possession, and you can kind of overlook that at a certain point. Does this have to be more collective when you guys are rebounding on the defensive glass? It, it definitely have to be more collective. We can never overlook what he did and uh, how he did it for us. Um, he was big, uh, big time for us on the on the boards. Um, but it has to be collective. Our guards have to get in and, and rebound uh, way more. Justin Turner, Dylan Fry, uh, those guys got to get in and get their share. Caleb Fields, they all have to now contribute in that category. You know, when you have a, a dominant rebounder, sometimes you kind of look and watch and, and see him get all the rebounds, and then you're like, woo, outlet, outlet, and we don't have that anymore. So they have to go in and get those rebounds themselves. But Taylor Matos is doing a fabulous job of rebounding for us um, in practice, and it shows in the game, we, um, you know, had some scrimmages and, and he did a fabulous job rebounding. So I think he'll do a great job there. What will you be looking for Wednesday, rotation, depth-wise, um, going up in, in an exhibition game? Um, you're looking at rotation, who plays well together. Um, I, I practice a little different from most uh, coaches. I mix the teams up all the time. So it's not, you know, we play one team all the time and another team all the time. So uh, every practice I mix guys in to see who plays well together and uh, just want to see who, who plays well on the court, who can share the ball, who can defend. The most, the most important thing I'm looking for on, on Wednesday is how well we defend and how well we share the ball on offense. But uh, the most important thing is how we defend. Justin Turner tested the NBA waters. What did that do? for him, not only on the court, but as a leader in his growth? Um, it, it made him communicate more. The things that I was saying to him about uh, being more of a vocal leader, uh, he saw it firsthand by going out to the NBA camps. He got invited to Chris Paul camp this summer, and uh, same thing. He saw the exact same thing that I was preaching to him. And he, he came back with a, a new energy um, of, of talking, and that was surprising to me. Um, when, he, when he came back, uh, that's all he did was talk on defense. So uh, I'm impressed with what he came back with, the knowledge that he gained. But uh, it was something that he wanted to do for himself and, and for his family. And he was able to accomplish that. And uh, we were able to get him back. This will be the second time this week Finley plays a max school from uh, Northwest Ohio. What, what is it about the Oilers that make a, a good team to prepare against? Uh, they're a very good uh, team. They, they share the ball well. They defend well. Uh, they can score it well. Um, they, they mix it up a little bit, and they're tough. And you always want to play an opponent like that uh, to start the season. And um, for us, exhibition time is, is go time. You know, it's, it's not really an exhibition. I really want to see what we can do. So uh, it's not a game that we take lightly. Um, they'll bring the whole town down with them, as they did last year. And it's always fun to have that type of atmosphere. And um, looking forward to a great game. Depth-wise, how many of your players would you like to see get on the floor each night? Uh, as many as possible. Uh, you have to see your rotation and what you can rotate and what you can sustain. 
Um, certain guys play well together. Certain guys don't play as well together. You've got to try to mix and match those. And um, the hardest thing is trying to keep everybody happy. No one's really ever happy with their minutes. And uh, guys always want to play more. But as a head coach, you've got to try to you know, mix those minutes up with, uh, you know, different guys and, you know, hopefully they can perform every night. If you can perform every night at that level, then, you know, it shouldn't be a problem with getting your minutes. Maggio didn't average 20 a game, but I know you mentioned before that if you needed a bucket, that was the guy you could dump it down into and get yourself two points. With him gone, how much of a step does the backcourt need to take forward, especially Justin Tate? Uh, I think all of the guys have to take a step forward, not just Justin. We can't now just rely on Justin to do it all himself. Um, you know, Dylan Fry has to step up as well, Caleb Fields. All of those guys have stepped up, Mike Laster. All of them have taken a step forward. So that's the thing I'm looking forward to seeing out on the court now um, when it's live go time and, and just to see how, how big of a step forward did we take. And, uh, and practice and preseason, all of that looks good. Defense looks great, but you know we're going against each other every day, and um, there's guys that are licking their chops to go against someone else. And uh, Finley is the ones, and and you know they're not going to take them lightly. So I know that for sure.